Uh, dear learners, in today's session on HDZ and India's achievement, we are going to touch upon our India's national development and programs, which were twin as per uh, that SDG's goals, that is 17 goals. In this, uh, and uh, our progress during the last, uh, since its uh, implementation of HDGs, right? In this uh, first session, uh, we are going to look into uh, from SDGs goal one to SDG goal nine. Goal number one is talk about no poverty. To end poverty in all its form, you know, by uh, everywhere by 2030. In India, looking on to our social structure and looking into our livelihood dependent, our livelihood system exists in our country. We need to strengthen agriculture, labor market to facilitate income growth especially for the economically disadvantaged group of the society. And uh, moreover, we need to have a social protection measures and a mitigation of risks from natural and other disasters that ensure that unfortunate exigency, exigencies do not disrupt the poverty reduction effort. India is demonstrating clear pro poor pattern in this line at the subnational level. Now, if you look into progress, our poverty reduction in rural areas outpaced that in urban areas. So, two important sector uh, approach government of uh, our nation is, uh, I mean, uh, following to achieve goal number one. That is social protection first. Then, when you talk about no poverty, it's then related to basic services. So, access to basic services is one of the approaches of our government of India. If we look into social protection, rural workers are protected against unemployment due to extent of at least, I mean, hundred days of uh, with employment per household in a year under Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Guarantee Act, MGRNE, uh, the Employment Guarantee Act. In addition to uh, providing employment guarantee under Manirega, the program helps build up agriculture infrastructure and productive action with improved reliability opportunity. So this particular social protection scheme generated about 2.7 uh, billion percent days of employment uh, during financial year 2018 to 2019, and 1 billion percent uh, days of employment so far during 1920. So, a sizable number of uh, these beneficiaries are women and from uh, scheduled caste and scheduled tribe community by accessing about 55 percent, 38 percent of percent days of working generated during 2018-2019. Then. By following access to basic services, the government is giving access to a range of financial services, including you know, banking, credit, insurance, and pension to vulnerable groups of communities. And that is provided under Pradhan Mantri Zan Dan Jojana. Under this Jojana, as many as 377 million accounts have been opened this with deposit of amount to Indian rupees 1079 billion. And this Prime Minister Zan Dan Jojana also enables direct benefit transfer to the accounts of beneficiaries and improve the effectiveness of social security provision. To strengthen the universalizing primary health care, so it is also initiated under Pradhan Mantri Zan Arogya Josna program. Disadvantaged and vulnerable person, including the elderly, widows, uh, and persons with disabilities, they are able to access pension under the National Social Assistance Program. Access to housing is also very important. So uh, it is one of the basic, when we talk about the basic requirement, we talk about Roti Kapra Makan. So uh, access to safe housing is also a very important uh, component and we ensure, the government ensure uh, under the, uh, this access to house under initiative of housing for all uh, by 2022. 
then energy is also important. So access to electricity for all households in the country is also achieved under the Saubhagya scheme. So these are some of the schemes under which we can look under the SDG goal one to achieve SDG goal. The achievement so far, you know, uh, by implementing all these, whatever that I mentioned, some of the new initiative by government of India, we are able to, if you look into poverty rate, if you look into some of the rate in 2011-12, as per Tendulkar committee, it estimated, it was estimates uh, that 21.9% of the Indian population lives below poverty line. Six states and the six Indian territories already achieved the nation target of reducing the poverty rate uh, to below 10.95% by 2030. And uh, Goa among the states and under, uh, Andaman and Nicobar Island among the Union territories have the lowest poverty rate of at 5.09% uh, or 1% respectively. Health is very important component to end poverty. So uh, health insurance coverage is also increasing from 28.7% of household have at least one member cover under a health insurance or healthcare scheme. The national target is to cover all the household in India by 2030. Then, as I mentioned that under Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Guarantee Act 205, 2005, it is also effectively utilizing across the country. Then, maintenance benefit, that is also very important social security scheme. So 36.4% of the eligible beneficiaries receive social protection benefit under this maternity benefit uh, as per NFISS. The national target is full coverage you know, uh, by 2030. Then we are, so far we have achieved 4.2% of household looking into that household living in Kacha houses. Among the states in India, the highest percentage of household living in Kacha Houses in Arunachal, 29%, Jammu and Kashmir, 4.3% respectively. None of the households are living in Kacha House in the Union Territories of uh, Andaman and Nicobar Island, Sandigan and Lakshadeep. The next goal, goal number two, zero hunger. Now, within nearly six fold increase in food grain production from 50 million tons in 1950-51 to more than 283.37 million tons. Uh, tons in 2018 19. India has done well to expand food production and build up the stock of food grants. Access to subsidized food has been met an entitlement and an incrementally efficient public distribution system that enables to access food grants far and wide in the country. Initial, a special initiative has been taken to ensure access to food of vulnerable section of the people. Given the fact that 70% of rural Indian households are dependent on agriculture, and improved food availability is the basis for sustainable access. Innovative initiatives are being introduced to modernize the agriculture and areas negative impacts of, especially the climate change. The L process followed by government of India is uh, to have food and nutrition security, then to increase agricultural productivity and agricultural income, and uh, buying a country uh, who is run by agriculture as an important profession, so climate adaptive agriculture and sustainability is one also of the one of the important approaches we are following. Under food and nutrition security, we have public distribution system under the National Food Security Act, and which is a paradigm shift in the approach to the, towards the issue of food security at household level, from welfare to a right-based approach. And this NFSA adopts a life cycle approach, making a special provision for ensuring food security of pregnant women lactating mothers and children from 6 months to 14 years of age. Under the NTO Daya Anna Josna AAY, the poorest from amongst the below poverty line families are entitled to uh, 35 kg of food grains per month at more subsidized rates. Then school growing children is uh, giving food uh, midday meal under the midday scheme, uh, which is provided uh, nutritious cook uh, midday meal with a calorie range of 450 to 7,000 to over 120 million children at primary and upper primary school. Then we have the National Nutrition Mission at Poshan Abhiyan also that make a concerted attack on undernutrition, stunting, and anemia. If we look from agricultural productivity and income point of view, we have a scheme like Pradhan Mantri Krishi, uh, Chinchai, Josna, PM KSO, uh, that focuses on improved water efficiency with the motto of Har Khet Ko Pani per drop more crops, and provided end-to-end uh, -end solution in the irrigation supply chain, based water resources, distribution network, and a farm level application. Then we have the Pradhan Mantri 
Fasal Bima Zosna that provides better insurance coverage and agricultural credit at a reduced rate of 4% per annum to farmers. The Pradhan Mantri Kishan scheme uh, which was uh, initiated that extend payment of Indian rupees 6,000 per year to every farmer in the country that provides a further boost to their income. Then under the scheme, Pradhan Mantri Kishan Sampada Zosna then financing of mega food infrastructure of agro processing cl cl clusters, integrated coal chain, and a value addition price structure are undertaken in addition to other components. So, in the era of climate adaptive agriculture and sustainability, we have the National Mission for Sustainable Agriculture. And uh, in tandem with other missions under the National Action Plan on Climate Change, that addresses the climate risks and aims to in Increase agricultural productivity, especially in rent fed areas, focusing on integrated farming, soil health management, and synergizing resource conservation. We have a National Innovation Climate Design and Agriculture Scheme, that climate design and technology demonstration, which was implemented in 151 climatically vulnerable district, which aims to enhance farmers' adaptive capacity and skills of resilient climate and culture. And uh, district agriculture contingency plan have been prepared for as many as 648 districts to adapt agriculture uh, to adverse weather conditions. By adopting such kind of schemes, project, and project, and we can look into what is our performance. When you talk up, uh, then if you look, for example, in that performance, we can look into food subsidy. Then in food subsidy, every real household where the monthly income of the highest earning member is less than Indian rupees 5,000 as per socioeconomic Cast census 2011 is covered under PDS, public distribution system. And Manipur among the states and Delhi among the union territories have recorded best performance of this indicator at 1.36 and 1.29 respectively. Looking into anemia among women, the target for 2025 for the nation has been set at 25.15%. And Kerala and Sikkim are the only states in India to have reduced these rates to below the target. Anemia among children, 40.5% children aged 6 to uh, 59 months are anemia in India, 40.5%. The aim of the government of India is to reduce from 40.5% to 14% by 2030. And we are progressing well, especially three states, uh, Nagaland, uh, Manipur, and Kerala, they have all the cross the set target with children anemia rates of 8, 10, and 12.5% respectively. Agricultural productivity. Indian agriculture produced 2,516.67 2, uh, kg of agricultural produce of rice, wheat, and coarse cereal from one hectare of land annually. The target is to double this by 2030 to 5,033.34 kg per hectare. Punjab and Andhra Pradesh are nearing this target with current level of 4,169.67 uh, 4, kg per hectare and 3,917.50 kg per hectare respectively. Again, if we look into the gross value added GBA in agriculture, Indian rupees 0.68 lakh is the gross value added in agriculture per worker currently. The target at GBA in agriculture per worker is set 1.36 lakhs in accordance with UN target 2.3. Goa with a GBA in agriculture per worker is at 3.7 lakh, Punjab at 2.4 lakhs, and Kerala at 2.19 lakh, uh, leading performance. And uh, Union Territories, Andaman Nicobar with 2.98, Sandigarh 2.78, and Delhi 2.35 lakhs, respectively. The goal number three good health and well being, ensuring healthy lives and promote well being for all at all ages. Let us see what is our approach. So, the extent of change and improvement in India's healthcare system over the past decade is very remarkable. We will see we are progressing very well. There have been significant shifts in health strategy adopted and new direction set. We are impatient, our impatience is on water and sanitation, primarily through Swiss Bharat mission. It has a considerable impact on the spread of communicable disease. The National Food Security Act and uh, the well-targeted national nutrition mission and portion of beyond. Again, technology is leveraged for improving the efficiency of the health management system, EVIN, Electronic Vaccine Intelligence Network, to track and improve immunization cover, then and more, ANM online, to extend better maternal and newborn care service and use of artificial intelligence to improve diagnostic and the treatment, and the treatment. 
to achieve uh, this goal number three, good health and well-being, the basic uh, important component which India is looking is reducing maternity mortality rate, reducing under five mortality, addressing the burden of communicable disease, adopting a focused approach for non-communicable diseases and CDS, ensuring universal health cooperation. So, so through this approaches to reduce maternity mortality ratio, we are implementing the reproductive maternal newborn child and adolescent and the adolescent health strategy. And we have had a profound impact on the maternal health situation because of this approach. To reduce under five mortality, we have universalized immunization approach under the mission Indra Danus and aims to immunize by 2030. To address the burden of communicable disease, the government has recognized the burden of this communicable disease and uh, we have been working to eradicate, eradicate them through several targeted programs such as we have NHCP, National Health Control Program, the Revised National Tuberculosis Control Program, RNTCP, and the National Doctor Bone Disease Control Program. To adopt a focused approach for non-communicable disease, we have National Program for Prevention and Control of Cancer, Diabetes, Cardiovascular Disease, and Strokes. NPCDCS, the National Multi-Sectoral Action Plan for Prevention and Control of NCDS that provide clear direction for tackling the growing burden of NCDS in the Indian socio-economic, cultural, and health system context. Under the Mental Health Care Act 2017, it has an entitlement approach to the delivery of mental health care and services. Ensuring universal health coverage is one of the key approach to achieve Goal number three. Under this, to achieve this, we have Pradhan Mantri Jan Arogya Josna with two basic components, Ayushman Bharat and, and Health and Wellness Center in 2018. This Ayushman Bharat targets to provide health insurance coverage to over 100 million poor and vulnerable families, approximately 500 million individuals, up to Indian rupees 5 lakhs per family per year for secondary tertiary institutional care. If we look into the achievement so far under this goal, our maternal mortality ratio stands at 122 per 1 lakh live birth. The UN target is to reduce it to 70 per 1 lakh live birth by 2030. So we already one, uh, 70 per, per. So indeed, three states, Kerala, Maharashtra, and Tamil Nadu have achieved this target with MMR, maternal mortality ratio of 42, 55, and 63, respectively. In institutional deliveries, approximately 54.7% of estimated deliveries happen in the health institution in India. The target is to increase it to 100%. We have to go. So Kerala is the best performing state with 74% institutional delivery. Among union territories, Chandigarh and Puducherry have achieved the target of 100%. Under five mortality rate, you will see, for every thousand live birth in India, 50 children are die before completing five years of age, according to NFHS 4. UN target is to bring down to 25 per thousand life, live birth. So under this, Kerala and uh, Goa among the states, and Andaman Nicobar Island in Pondicherry among the Indian territories have already achieved this target. The highest under five mortality rate in Uttar Pradesh is 78. Then if we look into immunization coverage in uh, children, the 75th round of the National Sample Survey observed that 59.2% of children in India in the age group of zero to five years are fully immunized. One dose of BCG, three dose of DPT and, and OPB, oral polio vaccine and one dose of measles vaccine. The nascent target is to increase 100%. Manipur is the best performing state with more than 75% of children under the, in the age group of 10 to uh, 0 to 5 years fully immunized. In case of tuberculosis, about 160 cases of tuberculosis per 1 lakh person were noted in 2018. The target is set to 0 cases noted, implying that the incidence of tuberculosis in the country needs to be eliminated. Among the states, the lowest incidence is noted in Tripura with only 66 cases. And Lakshadweep among the Union territory is on the top with 29 cases per 1 lakh population. And if we look into HIV incidence, it is per 1,000 infected population uh, is estimated to have declined from 
0.64 in 1995 to 0.07 in 2017. At 0.01, Himachal Pradesh is closest to achieving the UN target of zero HIV incidence. Jammu and Kashmir lead among the inventories with incidence of uh, 0.02. If we are looking from family planning, around 47.8 percent of currently married women aged that is uh, between 15 to 49 years use modern methods of methods of family planning. UN target is 100 percent. So. In Andhra Pradesh, with 69.4% uh, is the highest state in India. And among the Union Territories, uh, Puducherry, uh, with percentage indicator of 61.2%. Goal number four, quality education. Ensuring inclusive and quality education for all and promote lifelong learning. And we talk about education. India's basic objective is free, equitable, and quality primary and secondary education. Access to quality, early childhood development, care and pre-primary education, accessible, affordable, and quality higher education, skill development and economic growth, conducive educational facilities that are child, disabled, and gender sensitive. So in this line, our country's initiative under free, equitable, and quality primary and secondary education is we have centrally sponsored scheme of uh, Samagra Siksa that invites the school as a continuum for preschool, primary, upper primary, secondary to senior uh, secondary level. This scheme subsumes the three schemes of Sarva Saksha Abhiyan, SSA, Astria, Majamik Siksa Abhiyan, and Teachers Education. The primary objective of these schemes are the provision of quality education, enhancing learning outcomes of students, bridging social and gender gaps in school education through equity and inclusion, promoting vocationalization of education, and supporting the states in implementation of right of children to free and compulsory education, means right to education act 2009. Access to quality early childhood development, care and pre-primary education. Early childhood care and education, it is very essential foundation for lifelong development and learning, which have a lasting impact on early childhood development. The Integrated Child Development Service, ICDS scheme, offers a package of six services, supplementary nutrition, preschool non-formal education, nutrition and health education, immunization, health checkup, and referral services for children and in the age group of zero to six years, pregnant women and lactating mothers. So accessible, affordable, and quality higher education in this line, the consistent efforts are meant to expand the formal, of, uh, formal base of higher education with a particular focus on technical, professional, vocational education. So two, total enrollment in higher education is estimated to be 37.4 million with 19.2 million boys and 18.2 million girls. And girls constitute 48.6% of the total enrollment Gross enrollment ratio in higher education in India is 26.3% for 18 to uh, 23 years of age group. Skill development and economic growth. The flagship scheme of Pradhan Mantri Kausal because Osna supports youths in taking up industry level skill training to secure a better livelihood. To add, under the conducive educational facility that are child, disabled, gender sensitive, we have that uh, several schemes that increase girls' child education, such as uh, Betty Bachao, Betty Parao scheme. And uh, then we, have, we are promoting educational facilities uh, that are sensitive to the needs of disabled children, would, uh, that ensure an inclusive learning environment for all. We had Swas Bidyalois, that separate uh, toilets for girls, uh, that help to address female dropouts to considerable extent. If we look into the progress in case of enrollment ratio, the adjusted enrollment ratio in 1920 is from class one to eight, and that is elementary, uh, is uh, elementary and the secondary, uh, that is class nine to 10. Uh, the adjusted enrollment ratio in India is 75.83. Among the states, Tripura has the highest enrollment ratio of 94.72, while Delhi has led the Indian territories with 92.95. Children out of school. Goa is the best performing states with no child in the age group of 6 to 13 years out of school. Pondicherry performed the best among Union territories with an impressive figure of 0.18%. If we look into the average annual dropout, 
The dropout rate at the secondary level is 19.89%, with Himachal Pradesh performing the base among state with 7.0% and Chandigarh among Indian territories with zero. Enrollment ratio in higher education, according to AISIG report 2018 and 19, 26.3% of students in the age group of 18, point, 18 to 23 years are enrolled in higher education. The target is to increase it to 50% by 2030. Sikkim among the states and Sandigarh among the union territories have the highest enrollment ratio at 53.9% and 50.6% respectively.